Welcome to the Dr. Leadership Podcast, where the DR stands for Driving Results. Our focus is weekly conversations around life and business relationships and the important leadership qualities for both. These concepts and qualities will help you drive positive results in both your business and personal lives. A weekly connection point to help business leaders develop individual contributors, managers, and executives on your teams. We also will tie in concepts around family focus and life lessons to help you drive success in your personal life. Welcome to the Dr. Leadership Show. Let's get after it. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dr. Leadership Podcast. Another week in the can, as we say here. I uh, hope everybody's having a great day. Been uh, wonderful around here the last week. Um, Want to continue today uh, around culture. You know, we had touched on a number of things last week uh, on the importance of culture, and I want to continue down that road. Remember, you know, last week we kind of talked about uh, microcultures and how the further what the whole episode was really about is. Leaders can think that culture is going to be lost because of this new hybrid work environment, but in fact, all that has happened is how you develop culture and what your culture is has moved or changed. It's not this big, oh my God, scenario. We as leaders, we as individuals, we as family, uh, friends, any relationship where you're developing relationships, culture, etc., has changed over the last couple of years. And it's not ever going to go back to the way it was. We got to concentrate on where it is and where it's going and be good at that. And we touched on micro uh, cultures. We touched on uh, remote work culture development. Uh, each interaction is more important, right? Because you aren't together in the office every day. We touched on that. So I want to continue that on. Um, got some great feedback, some great reviews coming in too. I appreciate that. Remember, we can be reached at uh, Dr. Leadership Results at uh, gmail.com. And we also can uh, embrace you at our website at www.drleadershipresults.com. Great membership opportunities out there, special content, as I've said before, some great stuff loaded up. I'm going to feed a couple of them out here over the next coming weeks. The first couple uh, on uh, the Leadership Lounge, just to give you an idea of uh, what these individuals have to offer. i uh, going to put out there uh, Kevin Johnson from Accurate Development and also uh, uh, J.R. Bozen from Exec One a Exec one aviation, aviation, goodness, tough word today. I'm going to release, release those out to the field so you can get an idea on uh, what these other leaders have given as far as feedback and such. Got a couple of really big ones coming up tomorrow. Uh, I'm recording this one a couple of weeks in advance. I always have a couple of weeks done. So tomorrow is uh, actually uh, a couple of weeks ago when you hear this episode. Mess with the timing here. I've messed with the timing here. But uh, talking to Coach Vermeil tomorrow, kind of getting the uh, the final pieces of that put together. So very excited about Super Bowl winning coach uh, Dick Vermeil uh, coming on the show and giving us some insight. Going to be a fantastic conversation. What an awe-inspiring career he's had uh, in the booth with uh, Brent Musburger and, and multiple others, national championships and Super Bowls, and uh, coaching a couple different teams to the Super Bowl. A well-loved individual uh, just known as coach to his friends. I'm going to have him coming on as well. Excited about that. But let, let's dive in today around culture. And I'm going to give a lot of sports analogies, not analogies, but point out culture positives and failures that we've been able to see in the last couple of weeks. But I do want to dive in, first of all, and, and talk about when you're developing culture at work. Let's say you're a leader, a manager. You need to establish some big rocks, the, the things that are non-negotiable, right? Things such as integrity, honesty, being helpful to one another. No, none of this, it's not my job junk. You got to have fun. Why do it if it isn't fun? You know, one thing that I think my culture of my team is, is that we're constantly... Um, walking on the edge of that humor bus. You know, I mean, we're, we're having fun all the time. I expect people to pick on me because I need to take it as much as I give it out. I love picking on people and being sarcastic and having some fun with it. Never to hurt anybody. One thing this world has lost is its sense of humor. Things are funny because they're true, typically. Just because you don't like things that are true doesn't mean that it's not funny. We have become this thin-skinned world that can't handle anything if it doesn't meet the said narrative of whoever is virtue signaling at this time. 
You can't say something funny on Twitter. You can't say something funny on a Saturday Night Live uh, monologue. You can't say something funny in a comedy club. You, when you go into a comedy club, you have given away your rights to be offended. It is time to sit back and not take yourself so damn seriously, folks. But in business, having fun, being funny, I think it's great at establishing relationships, etc. Hard working. We got to be hard working, folks. I've said it a couple times. Uh, actually, one of the uh, the releases I'm going to do from the Leadership Lounge, Kevin Johnson's father said it best. You put in the first 40 to stay even because everybody puts in 40 hours a week. What you do from 40 to 60 is what creates differentiation. Your value prop becomes stronger. You're better at uh, whatever you do than the competition. That's where you become successful. Again, don't want to scare everybody off that you got to work 60, 70 hours a week. But you got to work hard. You got to give it your all every day. Not everybody gets to be a Kardashian where you release a video of yourself being naughty when you were 18 years old, turns into a billion dollar empire because you're showing yourself off every single day. That doesn't happen. TikTok is not going to be the successful way to your retirement for the very vast majority of us. You aren't going to invent the next app that's going to go all the way to the front of the line in the Apple store. Somebody will, but not everybody. Not all of us are going to win the lottery. I keep trying every week. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. But hope isn't a strategy. So you got to be willing to work hard. You know, uh, Elon Musk has shocked, whether you like him or hate him, I'm going to talk about a number of things here. It's not about I like him or dislike him. I just want you to ponder. Elon Musk, we can say, invented PayPal, very successful, sold it, billionaire. Creates Tesla. Very, very successful. They don't bring him in to talk about, um, you know, EV cars because he doesn't fit the narrative in, in the current administration. How stupid is that? Stop that crap both sides. Not speaking for or against any administration. But when you've got the gentleman that started the company that is tenfold of the next closest person in EV vehicles, you probably ought to have him in the room. Pretty smart guy. SpaceX. Gonna gonna send people into space. Already sending people into space. Starlink. Ukraine goes under. Can't communicate. Oh, Elon Musk just says, "Well, I'll send a few rockets up and drop satellites all over above the country, and everybody will be able to communicate again." That's a smart guy. Now, he mandates hard work. You've seen what's happened since he's taken over Twitter. He's the head twit, right? Funny, funny stuff. And he is uh, renting space in people's heads for free right now because everyone is disjointed because everything has to be political. It doesn't have to be political. Twitter is a platform that has not been equal in its coverage, period. That's not a political statement. That's just the truth. He's coming in. He's taking it over. He's going to, in his statements, normalize it, give fair play to both sides, you know, my mom had an interesting conversation about that. She goes, it feels uh, uh, oppressive when you've been treated with special kid gloves for the last few years. Only one side of the story is being told. If the other side starts getting told, suddenly you feel like it's not fair. No, that's what equality is. So you get to hear both sides. So he's fighting through this thing. And he came in, and I think actually his hard work approach, where he said everybody get ready to work really, really hard. And if you don't commit to working really, really hard, we're going to let you go. I think it was a way for him to call out the the, the weenies, the, just the, the people that aren't in it for the right reasons. They don't want to make Twitter a great thing for everybody. They want to mandate and control and sit on their uh, proverbial you-know-what and make a lot of money on stock options. That's not what makes him roar. That's not what, that's not what trips his trigger. He wants people to come in and say, listen, this platform has some great upside. Some of the ideas he's put out there, when you think about them, at least to me, kind of taking it to the next level. Some of the things he does and says out there have really aggravated people. And they suddenly say, he doesn't know how to run a company. It just makes me laugh so hard. The media, he'll, he, he's, he's going to put this thing under. I bet not. I bet not. Because everybody knows that that newscast person or that person that is supposed to be able to uh, to deliver news unbiased to us, which they don't. doesn't matter which channel you listen to. They're all biased. They aren't feeding the truth to you. I don't listen to those people. Hollywood, they don't even know how to spell Twitter. 
half these people. I'm going to leave Twitter. Good. Bye. See, that's what I'd say. Elon Musk, great. The hate speech is going to go through the roof. Actually, he just showed they put out reports, internal documentation from his analysts that work for Twitter. That is actually down. So forget the narrative. Hard work is a, uh, a very needed item in your culture because it's going to take hard work to be successful at anything in this world. Sports, life, a marriage, raising kids, being a good child. Anything that you want to do requires hard work. It's not about if you like somebody or not that I'm bringing as a reference point, but he's shocking the system because he's asking for hard work. You got to do a lot of things in, in this world to create a good culture. Fun is part of it. Celebrating others wins. What a great concept. I've talked about it a couple times. Teams are how you need to approach life. Life is about teams. You have your family as a team. You have your extended family as a team. You have your work team. You have your neighborhood team. Be happy for all of them. Why in the world would you carry a sour patch around because someone else is having a good day? Why in the world would you as an individual or a leader be upset? Let's say uh, another one of the, uh, the executives in my company has a better year than I do. I may use it as a motivating factor to say, hey, we need to catch Sue. Her division did better than our division next year. Let's put that as a target. That's good competitive drive. But I certainly would never say that Sue's, Sue was only successful because she got this and I didn't. Woe is me. No pity parties. Don't be a victim. Be a victor. Don't ever look down on other people's successes. Your time's coming. If you're doing the right things, you're dedicated and you're driving. But why would you do that? As your sibling, if your sibling is having a more successful sports career, maybe that sport isn't your destiny. Be glad for your sister or brother or cousin that's more successful than you are. The fact of the matter is they've probably put more work in at it. Not many things are just blessed. You know, you will see um, people that suddenly... Uh, have a savant moment, and they sit down at a piano at four years old and can play Beethoven. That's a gift. But 99 out of the other 100 concert pianists in the world have practiced and practiced and practiced. And that's the way you're going to get to where you want to get in life. Don't count on the big, easy win. Respect is another big rock inside of culture. Now, here's where I want to talk about something that just absolutely was one of the most impressive things I've ever seen this last week. The World Cup's going on, right? I'm not a big soccer guy. I always have said if I wanted to watch a bunch of guys run around for 90 minutes and not score, I'd go to the strip joint. <laughs> Still a funny line. But they run and are fit, and it, they are athletes. It's just not my sport. It's okay. It wasn't big when I was growing up. It's the world's biggest sport. So I say that with just a little having fun. But did you see what the Japanese team did? So after the game, I don't know if you've ever seen um, interviews from the, uh, from the locker rooms of other sports, etc. But <laughs> these players destroy it. The managers for the teams pick up uh, what is theirs. But typically you flash in afterwards and the place is a shambles. Crap everywhere, paper everywhere. Dirty towels everywhere. Nothing's been cleaned up. After they won their World Cup match, the Japanese team folded all the towels, cleaned all the lockers out, made the hangar stand nice. Place was better than they found it. Something my dad used to always say, if you borrow something, bring it back in better shape than when you borrowed it. If you borrow a car, fill it up with gas before you bring it back. You borrow somebody's truck to move something, drive through the car wash, Show it respect. Show them respect. Show them appreciation. That is a cornerstone of a good culture. The Japanese um, nationality is unbelievably focused to respect. Not only did their team members clean up the locker room, their fans stayed in the stadium and cleaned up all the crap, all the bottles, all the beer cans, all of the things that were thrown by the crowd that was happy for them, 
their fans, and all the ones that were thrown by the people pissed that they won. They show it, and there's hundreds of Japanese fans behind cleaning up the stadium. That's awe-inspiring. That is a good culture. Now, I interact with Japanese every single day. I wear my my day job, my 60-hour-a-week job, is a Japanese manufacturing company that is agnostic and, and provides some of the greatest communication capabilities in the world. I'm very proud of my company. And working for Japanese can be different than being appreciative on the sports team. There's a lot of desire to have as much information as possible from the Japanese culture. That can be taxing. But I'll tell you what, from a respect standpoint, I've never had anyone say a harsh word to me without respect. I've had it do coming to me on results or whatever might be the case that they're fighting through, but there's never a disrespectful approach. It is very, very important to them, and it shined through. And the Japanese, the country of Japan should be very proud, no matter what else happens in that World Cup, that they showed to the world what good looks like. You have a um, a big event about uh, climate go on in downtown New York or Washington, D.C. or London or Brussels or whatever. The people that say they're trying to save the planet destroy it in their wake. You've seen the, the pictures of it. These people, are they're, they're just talkers. They aren't serious about it. The Japanese culture is very serious about respect. Absolutely unbelievable what they did in that stadium. Accountability is a big one, too. Raise your hand if it's good news or bad news. We talked about that early on. Needs to be a big rock, right? Parents, you have to be accountable for your children. Let's talk about your family culture a little bit. Are your kids respectful to you and to others that are uh, you would classify as elders? Are they respectful to other children? Or is it a me, me, me? Have you given so much to your kids that you have caused a spoiled situation to start to happen? That's not being accountable to your children. That isn't teaching them what good looks like. Remember I said adversity. Hearing the word no is a very good thing for a young person. That is creating their ability to handle adversity that will become very important in any positive culture, business world, family world that they get involved with later. Remember, I'm always saying I'm tying these things together. They don't stand alone. They're a part of a greater good that I'm trying to deliver out there in this world today. I don't have all the right answers. I am certainly not exercising everything I say all the time. This is a reaffirmation to me every week, too. I'm putting myself accountable. If I say it, I record it, I distribute it, I better damn well do it. I'm trying. That's the key. One step at a time. How do you walk a thousand miles? First step. Second step. Third step, keep walking. One thing about kids today that can happen, everybody wants to be a star. TikTok and Instagram and all these types of things, that is creating a terrible, toxic civilization, people-on-people culture in our country and in our world today. You root against others. I want more likes than you. Children have begun wanting the affirmation of their peers more than their parents. This is a big problem. Children, young adults, you should be more interested in impressing your parents with good behaviors and good attributes toward others and being helpful than if you have a lot of likes on your Instagram page. Parents and grandparents, if you're listening, share these ideals with your kids and grandchildren and those around your kids. A lot of kids aren't getting good upbringing at home. Rearing has taken a back seat. Children are an inconvenience. They cannot be. They have to be your number one focus. You're creating our future leaders. You're creating our future hopes and dreams for our country and our world. You got to take it seriously. Kids, Don't be interested in likes. Be interested in that you make grandma and grandpa proud. Be interested that you make your mom and dad proud. Be interested that your brother or sister looks at you and says, man, they're doing awesome. That's good. 
I'm not saying don't do TikTok. I'm not saying don't enjoy a like here or there. But don't make it more important than your parents' praise. Success comes from positivity. Goals have to be around common-based beliefs, right? Whether it's business or life. Me as a parent, I wanted my children to be centered in their faith. I wanted them to be hardworking. I wanted them to understand that nothing comes for free. Life is hard. You have to be prepared for the worst-case scenario. You hope and drive for the best, but you are going to have to take challenging things on. It's coming at us. The guy last week, a mile from his car running, had to take that on. A lot of people, (laughs) I'd have melted in the corner, quite frankly, on that one. Something doesn't go good in life. You get a, a negative health statement around one of your loved ones. You have to be able to handle this stuff. So you have to have a common core in beliefs that things are good in this world if you act appropriately, you develop appropriately. Something that's also important in these cultures, now I'm talking about work and family a little bit, but engagement and loyalty. How many times are we seeing these kids that, that, that pop and they, they act out these, these things in schools, these shootings uh, up and down the street in uh, downtown Chicago, south side Chicago, Baltimore, Detroit, L.A.? They are not being reared at home appropriately. Don't blame society. Grandma needs to grab a hold of that grandson and say, you aren't going to act like a fool anymore. You need to be loyal to your family. You need to be engaged as a parent. You need to be engaged in your work environment. Elon Musk asked people to sign a loyalty clause. Well, guess what a non-compete is, folks, that we've all signed? You're kind of signing a loyalty clause because they put parameters around going somewhere else. I certainly want to be loyal to my company. That ties in with integrity. You have to have purpose. This is more uh, business-related suddenly, but remember, Indra Nooyi, PepsiCo former CEO, tie purpose to work. Performance with purpose. So you have to have purpose. You need engagement and loyalty. There has to be good opportunity. You need to have opportunity come at you and be available for you, for that culture to to thrive and strive. You have to carry your own sunshine in this world, right? As a culture, you have to be optimistic. You have to be driven. And you also have to be open for feedback. Feedback needs to be freely given in a positive culture in this business environment. There is no I. There's a lot of we. It's a common thread from me but it's how we have to approach it. In your business world as a leader, as a manager, as an individual contributor, if you believe in the culture of your team, be it a microculture or a macroculture, show it. Be loud and proud. You know what culture is? I heard this one the other day. You know your business culture can be determined if it's good or bad by how your employees feel on Sunday night. Sunday nights can be an absolute chore or they can be the beginning of preparation for that week's race. Tonight, it's Sunday, I'm recording this. Tonight, I will start to get mentally fired up about tomorrow. Some Sundays are tougher than others. There's a lot coming at us. I'm not perfect at this. But if your people dread coming into work on Monday mornings, if they despise Sunday night, and I hear it all the time, If you don't like Sunday nights, do something about it on Monday. Either your mindset's not right or you're not in the right spot in life. One of those two has got to move. One of those two has got to move. Why would you go through your entire life, work career, dreading Monday mornings? Mondays do seem to be the longest day of the week. I'll give you that. But suddenly, blink, it's Thursday. I mean, the weeks are flying by. The older you get, the faster it goes. It's just, it's amazing to me how that happens. But you got to be having fun. You got to be held accountable. You got to hold others accountable. You got to be engaged. You got to feel loyalty. You got to have purpose. You got to have opportunity. And you got to have a culture that doesn't make people hate coming in on Mondays. 
Same thing around your family. Me as a father, I never want my children to dread that here comes dad. I want to be, here comes dad. Hey, dad, I want a hug. I'm going to pick my daughter up at the airport. She's been away for uh, for, uh, Thanksgiving, and uh, she's coming back. Uh, As I said, I'm a couple weeks ahead on this thing. I can't wait to see her at the bottom of the escalator. Big hug. How you doing, baby? You good? Have a good time? Everybody safe? Tell me about it. I don't need to tell her about my week. I don't care. I want to know about her week. How was it? How was your sister? How was your mother? Everything okay? You fired up for tomorrow? Back at it? Don't dread Sunday night. But you want to do that as a family, too. You want to make sure that you are um, happy and you are invigorated in that space. Are you engaged in your kids' lives? Or are you inconvenienced by your children's lives? Or your aunt. You're an aunt, an uncle, whatever it might be. Your spouse, your, your significant other. Are you being supportive? Or are you being a drag? Don't be a drag. Be happy. Be outgoing. Be intrigued. Be a good listener. Two ears, one mouth. Use them in proportion. We've talked about this stuff. That's what good looks like. I want to give a couple examples of what bad looks like. Let's talk about the Michigan State-Michigan football game here a few weeks ago. Maybe you aren't a college football fan, but it was all over the news. And Michigan State had had kind of a revival since they uh, parted ways with their coach three years ago. They've got a new coach come in, kind of fire and brimstone guy. And I'm a Sparty fan. I like Michigan State. I'm an Iowa Hawkeye all the way through, tried and true, diehard fan. But I've always been a Sparty fan. Well, after the game, seven Michigan State players evidently didn't like something about one of the Michigan players and proceeded to beat the crap out of him in the tunnel under the stadium afterwards with cameras all over on him. Now, there's a breakdown in that team's culture. That coach can be great, but he has put winning more important than developing young men. The Iowa Hawkeyes aren't the most beautiful thing to watch at times, but they are good at creating good young men. That's what society needs. At 45, it doesn't matter if you could catch passes at 20. Better than everybody. It's great memories, but how are you as a father? How are you as a neighbor? How are you doing in your business career? Do your parents still look for you uh, in crowded spaces and long to be by your side? Those seven kids that made an attack on another player, doesn't matter what was said, have failed that team. All seven just got charged this week. Six with misdemeanor assaults. One, a felonious, that's a felony, assault over a football game. Someone loses, someone wins. I'm not saying those Michigan State kids should have been happy, but there is nothing that causes seven of you to go on one. You walk away. That is terrible culture, shameful of that university. And that university's had a number of bad things in their athletic department the last few years. The gymnastics stuff, oh my gosh. That is a failing athletic department. Somebody needs to step in. The athletic director needs to step in and say, I'm the new sheriff in town. This crap's going to stop. And if you got to let heads roll, you let heads roll. They represent the university. Is that how you want your university represented? Let's talk about Oregon. After the game last night, Oregon players watch not walking off the field. An Oregon State fan tips his cowboy hat kind of sarcastically at him as he walks by. The Oregon player punches the fan. That is a crappy culture. You are not raising and rearing young men into being leaders of the community down the road. I don't like losing. I have been very frustrated in the past about losing. I certainly hope I would never get to the to the realm of assaulting someone because they root for the other team or play for the other team. That is a failure 
from the parental guidance on that on these young men and that coach. If I were the coach, those kids would never play again. That is an un uh, redeeming un, you cannot redeem yourself from something that bad. And I know they're young kids, but that probably isn't going to get fixed. That is so bad. A felonious assault still in their uniform with cameras rolling. That dog probably can't get retrained. I'm not calling him a dog. I'm just saying. It's an analogy. That dog's going to bite again. Let's talk about this uh, Bitcoin competition, FTX company. Samuel Bankman, I think it's Freed, spelled fried in the English language. His career is fried, I'll tell you that. Why is this guy not in jail? Billions missing. I've had friends come up, and I'm going to talk about this in the investment side. We're getting close to that. I know I've uh, said it's coming, bringing uh, Tim Papadopoulos on, and uh, also we're going to be just talking about finances in your life. How do you, how do you drive and, and create wealth? And there's all sorts to that. It ain't through your salary. That's part of it. But sound investments making solid decisions is how you do it. But why is this guy not in jail? Because he made, uh, you know, $30 million investment towards green energy and suddenly he's on the good side and he's not being held accountable? I mean, we've sent SWAT teams in on people because they sent a text in the last two years. We've lied on warrants to court systems through our national police organizations to try to take people down. This guy, we know he's stolen billions of dollars. We know they had no accounting practice. They had not been audited. In 2019, they started. They're now a $100 billion operation, and nobody looked at the numbers? Who's accountable for that? They say it's bigger than Madoff. It's like Enron, Lehman Brothers. This guy's still sitting in a, in a penthouse down the Bahamas. That company culture was awful. It was all about parties and drugs and, and being these free spirits. You know, everybody says the, the world's changed. We don't need to listen to our elders any longer. Hey, those elders have a lot of experience. Those elders wouldn't have put together a, a, a business that, that stole billions from people and didn't have audited financials. They literally had no HR department, they say. They were using company funds to buy homes in the Bahamas and cars and vacations. Who do these people think they are? That is a failing culture. And the thing is, is that culture just cost lots and lots of people, potentially their retirement. What's that going to lead to? Abused spouses? Suicides? I don't know. That's not acceptable, though. That culture is a failure. Culture is a tough thing, folks. This isn't the end of this. Culture is about creating a, a, an environment that drives results through having fun, self-accountability, accountability, uh, accountability to others, integrity, having fun, have a sense of humor, enjoy it, and be ready to go on Mondays. Culture in your company is how your employees think about you on Sunday night. I'm sure some of you probably don't even know how your employees feel about you on Sunday night. Why don't you ask them? Time for a survey. Get some feedback, right? Talked about feedback. You got to have feedback. All of us have room to grow. We're going to kick into the financial side of this thing coming up. Looking forward to that. Remember, we can be reached at uh, the website, www.drleadershipresults.com. Check out our subscription services. It's worth the money. It's five bucks. Lots of good stuff from other people other than me. I'm not going to retire on this thing. But that content, it's worth it. Some great stories. Give us some feedback. Ask some questions. We can be reached at the, uh, at the email, drleadershipresults at gmail.com. I'm excited about what's coming up, folks. I'm excited about playing along with you, getting engaged on these conversations every week. And the reason is, is because you're awesome. Keep that shit up. Talk next week.